Welcome back. One time Trump rival Nikki Haley is weighing in on the language and rhetoric the Trump campaign is using in the final days of this race, including those racist and defensive remarks made about Puerto Rico and Latinos at Trump's rally at Madison Square Garden. They need to go and tell Puerto Ricans how much, you know, they do value them. They need to tell Latinos that, but they also need to look at how they're talking about women. I mean, the, this bromance and this masculinity stuff, I mean, it, it, it borders on edgy to the point that it's going to make women uncomfortable. Well, as we previewed yesterday in our final installment of our Deciders Focus Group series, we went back to some of Haley's supporters to see where they stand now. Take a listen to some of that fascinating conversation. You voted for Nikki Haley in the primary. Mm -hmm. So do you view Trump as being in the same style of Republican as Haley? No. <laughs> okay. I guess, so in your mind, is Trump closer to Haley than Harris is? Is that how you look at it? Yeah, I think so. I really like the idea that Nikki Haley was a woman, and I thought she would have more closer values to mine. I would probably not vote versus, but not vote for a Republican. You know what I mean? I wouldn't switch my vote to the Democratic candidate. I would just not vote. When it comes to Kamala Harris, what are you most fearful of? That she isn't strong enough that she doesn't stand up like, you know, when she needs to. I'm afraid that Congress, they won't take her seriously. She would be the first woman president. I'm just afraid that being that first, it's going to make it hard for her. Chris? I'm fearful that she'll uh, keep running things the same way that they've already been ran for the past four years. And then I'm also fearful of like foreign relations that some of the dictators or uh, people in power of other countries are not going to take her as seriously as everybody else. Especially with the border and everything, how, how she handled it. She was in charge of it as a VP. So I'd worry that some of that stuff from her vice presidency and the Biden administration will carry over to her presidency. Joining me now is Margaret Tollev, director of Syracuse University's Institute for Democracy, Journalism, and Citizenship. Margaret, it is so great to see you. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So what were your key takeaways? One of the things that just stands out to me, here you have two women saying things like, I'm concerned she's not strong enough. She won't be effective enough at working with Congress because she's the first woman president. Really fascinating. Yeah, there's definitely some political and psychological projection going on here. And we actually have seen it in, uh, in blocks of other types of voters it, it, it tends to be women and they tend to be either concerned that about her capability to do it or concerned about how other people will perceive her capability to do it but if you watch this segment you might what you just showed you might walk away thinking wow Nikki Haley voters don't like Harris actually mm. out of the panels that we talked to this week um, about a third were gonna vote for Harris about a third we're gonna vote for um, former President Trump, or we're leaning that way in each direction, and, and the remaining chunk were like, I don't know, third party, wild card, like, I don't know, libertarian. And so what we're really seeing here is that there are two camps of Nikki Haley voters. There is the camp that is so completely turned off by Trump and all either the chaos or his comments or the January 6th stuff or any of the many things they might pick that they're like, we're not voting for him. Mm. Some are going to go for Harris. Some are trying to figure out, should they stay home? Should they pick a third-party candidate? And then there is the camp that is like one of the voters that you heard from who's a Republican, and they identify with the party, and they say, I'm going to vote for whoever the nominee is. I, I might mm. not want to vote for Donald Trump, but that's who I'm going to vote for. So that's really the contest here and why this matters. It matters in some states more than others, but if my memory serves, in Pennsylvania, something like 16% of the GOP electorate back in the primary wanted Nikki Haley. If that segment splits and it comes down to 1%, it really could matter. Mm. Uh, well, I, you're right. And I mean, I've talked to 
sources on both sides of the aisle who've said Nikki Haley's voters could actually determine who wins this race. Let's talk a little bit about the rhetoric. You referenced that. Yeah. They are listening. They're paying close attention. Did you get the sense that something like an event at Madison Square Garden resonated for these voters? It's really interesting that you ask that because, of course, in that case, it wasn't Trump himself uh, making the comments, but it was uh, the, the people who were invited by the Trump campaign mm -hmm. to be there on stage were put out there. Uh, and it was a universal turnoff to mm. literally every panelist were varying degrees of disgusted or horrified or embarrassed by it. But it it affected different people's instinct about how to behave differently. Some people are like, I hate this, but I'm st I, I know I'm, but I'm never going to vote for Kamala Harris. And others are like, I hate this. And this is why I can't vote for Donald Trump. And there was even one, one or two. I'm trying to remember who were really on the fence. And this was helping them make their decision away from uh, Donald Trump. It, in fact, when you think about Harris's actual strategic efforts to bring Liz Cheney or Dick yeah. Cheney out there or all of the former Trump officials amplified John Kelly's comments, none of that seemed to be working huh. at all with these really? voters. It was the unforced error of the Trump campaign itself and of the comedian and of all. It just it was very triggering because even if that wasn't Trump himself, it just reminded them of all the stuff that gets collected around him and 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 it was that that they kept going back that to is so fascinating and also takes me to my next question how much do endorsements matter nikki haley has endorsed trump she has not appeared with him on the campaign trail margaret and at this point in time it doesn't seem like there are plans to do so now of course she could pop up with him on the campaign trail we'll wait to see what happens in these next six yeah. days do you think a joint appearance like that would have an impact it might for some of these voters um because they are nikki haley voters it's like they weren't liz cheney voters yeah. they weren't john kelly voters they were nikki haley voters and so um what we heard um Actually, what we heard a couple say is that her decision in the end to come back around and say she would not just support him but endorse him, that that gave a couple of them either a permission structure or a, the validation they needed to stick with him. Uh, but they do want to see her out there. And what they want to hear from Kamala Harris, mo and most of them do not want to vote for Kamala Harris, but what they want to hear from her is that she will include Republicans in her cabinet. Mm. She will appoint Republicans to positions that she will not just say she wants to be president for everyone, but truly bring Republicans into the process. That is something that could make a difference to some of these voters. Certainly one of, part of her message last night when she was speaking at the Ellipse here. Margaret Tollif, these focus groups are always so fascinating. Thank you for your great reporting on Thank them. You. Really appreciate it. Great to see you. Coming up after the break, Democrats uphill battle to keep the Senate and the most competitive races to watch on election night that could tip the balance of power in both both chambers of Congress. You're watching Meet the Press now. Stay with us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.